please do not sneak up on me like that. that God, you scared the crap out of me. I, I'm not even done cleaning up from the last show. You want, what, you want me to start again now? I'm not even wearing my art shirt. I don't, I'm, I have to, I'm not organized. I'm not. Okay, fine. Let me just get my art shirt on. Be right back and we'll, we'll start the bulking up process. So, I'm back, and ready to start bulking! That is to say, adding the general mass to this guy so he's not just a skeleton. And, if you would have given me time to clean this place up, this would have been a lot easier, but anyway. Show must go on, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is check out, uh, let's see, where, where we left off, which is, you know, I, I set his feet in there, so I just want to make sure that he pops in and out. You know, all this time I've been calling Barba a he, and, uh, you know, that, that might not even be accurate, there's, there's no telling, it could be a she. The female dwarves have beards, so I don't see why the lost side kind of have beards. Oh, forgot. Got my sculpting helmet. And I forgot my timer. Hold on. greatest of these. Everything seems pretty solid. Except for this table. Pro tip number 70.2 is to clean as you go. You don't end up with this kind of mess. Oh, one thing I thought about recently was uh, this knee is nice and uh, uh, supportive, and this one is not. So, uh, I'm gonna backtrack for a second. I'm gonna look at my reference before I catch this piece. I'm gonna see it. Do I want the do I want the support on this side or on this side? I'm gonna the inside is probably best. This leg is coming forward, which means the top of the thigh is going to be there. So I probably want to bury it in the back of me. Now I'm probably going to try a couple different things here for massing and bulking. Um, my first inclination was to try this stuff. Uh, this might actually be a little too bulky. Um, well, this is the three inch. No, the two inch. I'm just trying to think what's going to give me the, the fastest bulk up with the smallest amount of cutting. You know, like if, if I put this, obviously. If I put this on both sides of the leg. It's going to be too fat. I won't have the play that I'm going to need later on to be able to put nooks and crannies and creases and folds. I'll be ramming into the bulking material the whole time. So, got to be really careful about that at the beginning. It's always, always better to under bulk than to over bulk because once you have your clay or whatever material you're sculpting on uh, and you start hitting the stuff underneath, you either have to pull off all that clay, which means potentially all the work that you've done, and then you remove the bulking material and put it back on, or uh, you end up with a fatter creature than you intended. So. so 
So I think probably on the, the well, at least the legs, probably the arms too. I'm going to go with my old standby, which I usually use for sculpty figures, which is aluminum foil. And then I'll wrap that foil in something and then pack on probably, probably some um, plaster bandage stuff to give it a nice rigid shell. But look, I just happen to have all this uh, foil that I pull off the table. So. The really nice thing about foil for bulking is that you can kind of squish it to the shape you want. You can keep it loose, you know, to, to, and then if it's too big, you just kind of squish it down a little bit. And if it ends up too big altogether, you can just rip parts off. So it's very nice in how malleable and flexible it is. Those are probably synonyms that mean exactly the same thing. so it's not going to shake back and forth. I'm going to add these on each side of the hips to give it four points of contact, so it's definitely not going to wiggle around. And by definitely, I mean probably. By probably, I mean I have no idea if it's actually going to work. This is my foam cutter guy again. Now I'm stopping to think because we've got the male end on the torso going down and female on the pelvis and if we've got male sticking up from the pelvis and the female on the torso um, then there's all sorts of jaggies and I really like having one smooth part so that this whole base can be one part so when I get transported or whatever I can pop it apart and slide this into something that's only that tall. I don't have to worry about crazy stuff sticking up off the top. So, in order to make this the female end, we're gonna have to find a way to dig these uh, tubes into this material. So. Now I know it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get the angle that the the spine part slides in and the two halves the pelvis slide in at exactly the right angle. I'm going to use a, just a drop of hot glue kind of um, anchor the top point in but that still gives me the flexibility to uh, pull the bottom back or forth as needed once I uh, get everything in there in a way that is more permanent. Place, I'm going to start adding uh, 
drop of glue at a time, and then pulling it in and out and in and out, and adjusting micro corrections of a degree until uh, the whole thing is finally firmly in place. And then I'll go in with an epoxy and get them all very solid. But hot glue is just my way of thumbnailing it. Okay, so the hot glue has got this put in place in such a way that I can slide it in and out with relative ease every time. Now there's a little bit of give, obviously. I mean, it's just hot glued and this is to foil and foam, which is a little bit wiggly. So none of this stuff is, you know, super permanent or set in stone. But I'm gonna bring it a step closer with the epoxy sculpt. And once this is set up, um, now, I'm not going to lay it on super thick. I'm going to put it on pretty sparingly, still just kind of tacking it in there so that uh, in case you know I pull it out and it won't go back in or I can't pull it out or whatever, it's easy to chisel that stuff out and try again. All right, well, I will be back in a little bit after this stuff sets up and continue the bulking process. All right, so the stuff is set up. This thing, kind of, on and on. See how easy that was? slides on easy. Yeah, just needs a little momentum, so I'm happy with it. Now I'll go ahead and finish bulking up the rest of the body. Concerned that the uh, waist isn't quite narrow enough. But before I do anything drastic like uh, pulling everything off and cutting it down more, I'm going to bulk out the legs a little bit and work on the rest of it just in case my perception is caused by the fact that all the rest of the proportions are not in place yet. That's a pro tip uh, number 101 that's always important to keep in mind. Um, you may have noticed that I'm constantly spinning this left and right and looking at it many different angles and I'm adding in different places. I'm not focusing on one area. I'm not just doing just the torso or just the left leg or whatever. I'm constantly moving it around um, because if you get caught up in one section, you can get way too detailed into it and then when you step back, you'll see that the portion's all wrong and you have to start over. So what I'm basically seeing here is that the legs are, um, the, the hip joints themselves are a little further out than I should have put them um, and so what I'm what I've been doing is just wrapping the foil around so it builds up uniformly around the center point. And what I need to do is build up more on the, on the middle of the thigh to put the legs closer together. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this down a little bit because I was basing this proportion, kind of eyeballing it off of where the hip joints were, which like I just said, were a little too far out. See how my uh, wire tool magically started working again. Nice. Yep, 
Yeah, that's feeling a lot better for the waist width, you know. Nothing that you've done, please don't feel guilty. Um, but something you did made me uh, create this guy kind of leaning way too far forward. So, I mean, again, don't blame yourself, but in the future, when you're watching my videos, please refrain from doing whatever it was you were doing that caused me uh, to make this grievous error. Because this is, might be kind of annoying to fix, I don't know. But, I mean, as you can see, I've got the, the basic bulk of them bulked up. And uh, by the time I get all the material on him, uh, he's going to just so over uh, weight on the front part that um, I would be afraid he would fall over. So, um, uh, Just a few quick notes before I, before I fix your screw up. Um, the, uh, the reason I made the arms uh, uh, cut off at this point is because he has that convenient, you know, arm band thing that goes right over his bicep. Uh, so it'll be very easy to hide the seam once I pop it on and off. It's inconvenient in that it goes right where a big, you know, like flow of muscle movement is. Like it's nicer to kind of put it in shoulders and stuff like that. But uh, I'm concerned because of all the fur and stuff that I'm going to have to put in that area that if I, if I put the seam up there, it's just going to cause more problems. So I'm just going to have to overcome the, uh, the flow issue. So the way I'm hoping to fix this tilt is I'm going to take up the, the legs out of the stand and hopefully just be able to bend the foot things more that way. Yeah, I mean, as it is for its size, right, it's not super heavy, but I'm definitely starting to feel it, and I imagine once I start getting, you know, real sculpting material on here, it's gonna start getting heavy real fast, so I'm trying to think ahead, it's my old noodle, uh, I mean my brain, that's what that slang is for, my old noodle. See, this is going to get a little bit tricky uh, when I melt this, these uh, tubes here and start bending them. I'm going to want to be very careful that they stay parallel, otherwise they're not going to fit into the sockets I have in the bottom. 
But you know, if uh, sculpting a four foot tall Colossus was easy, someone probably would have done it by now. And I did need a relatively minor angle, keeping in mind that, uh, you know, it's a slight angle down here because by the time it uh, evolved the trajectory all the way to the top, it's going to be quite a difference. Putting a little wedge here to make sure that the pieces stay parallel. Well now, I don't know about you, but to me, it looks like he is falling over. Um, and what I'd really love to do is get in there and tweak his spine to uh, compensate for that. That is how creatures balance, even while moving. I think potentially an easy way to get that same effect is to basically put a wedge above his right pelvic bone right there, which will push this up. Oh no, but that's not going to work because I have this uh, four points of contact that is sliding in, so it's, it's always going to go at that angle, which means I either need to change the angle uh, of the hip joints, uh, tear everything apart and do the back some more, or keep fiddling with the feet. Since I already have the feet fiddling thing, uh, I think I'm going to do a little more of that, so we'll see where that gets me. Okay, I think I'm, uh, I'm happy now. I mean, not like happier than I've ever been in my life, but. My next plan is to uh, wrap this guy kind of in tape, almost like a mummy. And that will help me kind of see places that still need to be filled in more. It's kind of hard to judge the surface quality with reflective crumples everywhere, so. Right, so this plaster wrap is what I was going to use to do the, the bottom layer of the skin. Uh, but because I'm not happy with how the, uh, the guy keeps shifting his stance, I'm going to brace the legs with a couple layers of this. Uh, this will strengthen it, but it will also make it heavy. But since it's on the legs, I don't care how heavy it is. I just care how heavy the top it is. This stuff, if you never used it, it's just like a gauze type material with a dry plaster in it. You just dip it in water like so. 
lose. Bring most of the water out of it, and you're quiet. Like you're making a cast. So I am strengthening his bones with no calcium. Now this stuff is messy and it will splatter all over you so uh, you don't want to wear, say, your favorite Princess Bride shirt. Um, you want to wear your second favorite Princess Bride shirt. That's what this is. Hello! My name is Diego Montoya. You killed my father. Yeah. Oscar worthy, right? Yeah. What am I doing sculpting tutorials for? I should be... You know, stealing Daniel Day Lewis's Oscars or something.
I'm looking at the portions here, um, seeing that the, the hands are not as, uh, well, okay, I basically have to cut the wrist back a little bit. Otherwise, his arms end up just poking. Which is one of the reasons why I made everything detachable, so it'll be fairly easy to go in here and hack these down to size. Another thing I see is that I want to braid, uh, make his legs a little bit longer, so that's just a matter of pulling the uh, feet up out of the stanchions a little bit. So the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, now that I've got the, um, what is it, kind of the understructure of the bulk, now I want to start um, applying a more you know, even surface that actually you can see kind of the muscle contours and stuff like that. Uh, it's still not the, the surface surface, but kind of like the fatty surface, fatty muscly surface that's under the skin. So. Um, I've got these two products that I brought up uh, in the first chapter. This uh, Cellu Clay and Clay Crete. And I did a little experimenting on this um, the most useless thing you could find in any art store ever are these stupid little wood mannequins. Um, I still don't know why I got one. But anyway, it came in useful because uh, I used it to, as kind of a little armature to test out this stuff on. So this gray stuff is the cellular clay, and you can you can see the difference in surface quality between the two, uh, the amount of detail you can get, and also because I put it on this flexible armature, I can see how strong it is. So I can apply quite a bit of pressure to this arm, and it is not going anywhere. Uh, whereas with this claycrete, uh, I twist it just a little bit and you can see it's kind of pulling apart. It's still very kind of fibrous and pulpy. Um, I think this stuff is, is quite a bit lighter. Um, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that I can mix the two together because they're basically just different kinds of fiber that you mix in water and you slap on there and it dries eventually. So. Uh, because I don't have enough of one to do it. Um, this one seems good for just just massing because it's it's so pulpy and blobby and very light. So I'll probably use all of this bag and mix in some of this too just for some of that strength and fill it out with Both of these products, when you mix them in water, you're going to kick up a lot of dust, so I recommend uh, some kind of a mix. Well, I like the way that this stuff is laying on, and I ran out of uh, the clay crete, so I will buy more clay crete for uh, next time. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do this little operation. Okay, so here's the problem that I'm running into, is that because the uh, armature underneath is held together with uh, duct tape and aluminum foil, and it's PVC pipe, which is a little bit of give. Uh, what I'm ending up with is these uh, pipes are a little um, loosey-goosey, I think is the technical term. So when I, when I pop the arm on, it kind of uh, squishes back into the, the armature back where I can reach it, so that's getting annoying. And the way I'm going to fix that hopefully is I'm going to drill a hole uh, through this guy and then put like a little nail or something and that should keep it 
I confirm. We shall see. An interesting thing is, uh, so the, the nails, I don't have very long nails on me, but just cut them recently. So I, uh, I'm trying this little brass tube that I've got, and one thing I'm noticing is that uh, it's cutting into the uh, distance that this socket has to stick into it. So it's going to be a lot looser, which means, but I'm thinking this might actually be a good thing, um, I can cut notches in uh, this guy, like so, and that will not only give me more room to, to push the sockets together, but it will also ensure that it doesn't uh, wiggle left or right. Because it's, you know, I was thinking I would have to put another nub or something sticking out that would stick into there, but that this actually kind of kills two birds with one stone, if you're into killing birds with a stone. I prefer electricity. Gonna use a little bit of hot glue to hold these in place until I get the permanent material over them. So I'm realizing now that uh, what I did wrong is I capped off this end um, really close to the edge of the pipe so there really is not a lot of room to slide this on which means the, the connection is not very strong which means uh, I think I'm going to need to basically drill uh, another hole kind of like how I, how I did with the weights right so it's got the PVC pipe connections but it's also got these big steel ones that keep it very firmly socketed in place because they're so long. So I'm going to have to basically do the same thing for both of these arms. Now I've got these brass tubes which are um, no idea what they're used for in real life, but in my crazy garage, they are generally used for um, armature things where uh, stuff needs to slide in and out of each other. So um, I'm going to fix one in here and one in there, and that should give me the um, length and strength that is necessary to hold the arm in place after it's got all its uh, weight on it. I know I'm going to want this to go as straight in there as possible because if it's crooked and I'm trying to slide this into a socket that's on this side, uh, it's going to spell trouble. So. I'm going to drop some hot glue into this hole. And then push the tube in there. And then before the hot glue dries, hopefully, this on there the way we need it. And if all goes according to plan, hot glue dries, holds it in place well enough so that when I go in and put the more the, the stronger substance uh, around it that holds it in place, it will, it will be in its permanent position. Pro tip number 377, if you want to break a drill tip, the best way to do it is to um, keep your eye on something else while you reach for your drill, knocks it onto the floor, which breaks the tip of the uh, drill bit. You get that question all the time. Josh, I've got this drill bit and I want to break it, but I'm not sure how. It's the best way. All right, 
So now I'm much happier with how uh, stable and um, stable, and also with how stable it is. So I'm going to start adding uh, more bulk. Specifically, I'm going to. Uh, this is what I'm going to try to do. Tell me if this is a bad idea or not. I mean, please tell me before I start doing it, because it's a pretty pointless if you wait till after. So I'm going to actually uh, sculpt over these cracks where his arms and waist join together. And then I'm going to, after, after it sets up and dries, I'm going to saw back into it. So that way I'm not interrupting the flow of the musculature and all that kind of stuff, trying to keep these uh, you know, arbitrary lines through him. So again, this is your last chance. Email me real quick. This is a bad idea.